somehow the superior melanin would have overstuck or overstuck that and we'd be back on track to our mortal world. But first of all, I do not believe that the colors that we all are, the yellow, red, and brown, was the actual color for the species because based upon everything that we see on this planet, the color that most assimilates best with solar light is what? Hmm? Green. Now, wait a minute, don't rush it. Don't rush the stage, folks. I believe that somehow there's a piece of the information that's missing about color as far as human beings are so I know that the plant life on this planet seems to be able to process solar radiation more efficiently than we do into nutrition. And that the color green in our own spectral reality has somehow been missing. And I'll tell you why. If you go into the books of history or our story, and those books I look at as the Kinetic and as well as the Vedic myth, what you like to call myth, or what the white man likes to call myth, I believe that the information that was given to us through the Kinetic writings as well as through the Vedic writings are more relevant than the science that you're being taught right now because everything that we're doing is second hand. Why are we looking for our so-called past and history in the scientific books that the European has written? Why are we not studying our story based upon what was written in certain books like Pertem Ru or the Book of the Coming Forth by Day? Why are we not looking for what caused the destruction of our so-called great civilization to what we are here today? Well, I can tell you, you can find the clues in the so-called Everest Papyrus and all the other papyri that were written and translated by the so-called Europeans. I think that if we are not to doom ourselves to repeat the mistakes that brought us down, we have to study not all that is so-called fly with ourselves, because they're going to do that anyway. But it's time we start studying what caused the fall in the first place. And based upon our superior selves and as the progenitors of civilization, what was it that brought us down? Because couldn't no person crawling on all fours, walking with cave skin, come in to Kim and take us out? What took us out? We keep blaming the Europeans for our downfall, but I believe our downfall was based upon those so-called gods that were talked about in the Kemetic and the Vedic writings. The ones you call the Neteru, the Neberu, or the Niteru, or the Ennead, or the Pandavas of the, of the Veda. Because in the beginning of the Kemetic writings, you saw that there was this serious interaction between so-called man or human and the gods. You were going along real good. And then in the latter writings, mankind or humanity was kind of vilifying the gods. They were pissed with the gods for some reason. And I'll tell you too that the specific coloration that we had, the ideal coloration, you would want to look to the gods because they were supposedly superior to humans, right? So in all the writings, what do we find about the color of the Motais? What was the specific color of those who were supposedly the gods? What was the color of Osir? What was the color of Osiris? Before and after his crucifixion. Black and green. What was the color of Drapadi in the Veda? Oh boy. Yeah. Huh? She was green. What was the color of Eve in your Bible? They cut my throat again with time. Chronos. Let me run down a few pieces of information that I need to get on this tape because I think that there is some valid information here to be given in my investigation 
The gods altered in color in progressive pathology, and this is why I put it down, so you know they're ready to cut my throat with time so I can't just talk to you all. I gotta write it down to make sure I get it on tape. The gods altered in color in progressive pathological stages. The true text, or the true text you need to read in about who you were, are in the Gnostic text, as per those that were hidden from the Christian text, the ones that were abbreviated by Shakespeare who gave you your Bible. But in the Kemetic and the Vedic text, they come right out and tell us, Homer, that so-called Greek writer, came right out and point and said that we mortals were to see the primal gods. If we were to see them, it would drive us crazy because we humans would have seen how much we changed. According to Kemetic and Vedic histories, the gods of the primal family, the Amiad or the Pandava, were green-skinned. A great disaster of thermal nuclear proportions wreaked havoc on the environment, forcing changes in our metabolism. Kemetic sources stated that they had turquoise skin, and why that stone, turquoise, as well as malachite, was held in such high esteem also by the Amerindians. Osir, the only god shown, is always shown as green-skinned in hand. Most comedic statues of royalty are done in green fists or in malachite. Of us, or Isis, they say, bestower of life, lady of life, creatrix of green things, bestower of life, giver of her goods to the gods, and giver of offerings to the spirits, green goddess, whose green color is like unto greenness of the earth. This is Osiris in the Resurrections. You can get that in Wallace Budge books. In the Veda, Drapadi, the daughter of the gods, had green skin of beryl stone. Esther of your Bible, read in your Bible Esther. Her skin was greenish like the green of a myrtle. This is in Hebrew myth. I'm giving you the books you can go and check. In the same book, Adam, in Hebrew myths, was also of olive skin. There were actually five skin types written about in Kemetic and Vedic texts. Green, red, yellow, brown, and white. The blackness as we know it, essentially, was only specific to a different class of gods. And this would be a powerful literary historic indication of the progressive stages of disease called chromatism, something like vitiligo. And it is obvious that they had lost a vital molecule, that the vital molecule lost that changed the green tone of us was magnesium. Magnesium molecule is lost from the melatonin. And iron took its place. Now let me ask you a question. What happens when you have iron and you mix it with water and oxygen? What's that? Rust. So essentially, everybody who's telling you that the base of your blood is iron, mix that with certain types of atmospheric pollutants, and what do you get? Rust. So if you are the ideal creation of the gods, what would be the base metal of your blood if you wanted to be an ideal creature? What is the most precious of your metals? Gold. That's right. The basis of your blood was gold at one time. It didn't rust. Why are we aging? Why is oxygen, contrary to belief, a toxin to us at times? Because it's not in connection with the other elements that together create a harmonious environment. Sucking in oxygen all the time is toxic to the system because it has certain radio, radioactive isotopes in it. 14.0, And oxygen creates free radicals. So if oxygen is so good for us, why is it that it's creating free radicals within our system? I can't get all deeper into it because of the time span. Let me just cover this quickly. 
the ancient text, there's a frequent reference to the wheel. And the reason why we have lost that green melanin color, or that green color in our melanin, was because of atmospheric changes, anomalies, magnetic anomalies that had changed. In the ancient text, there's a frequent reference to something called the wheel. And the fact that certain powerful gods were given charge of it. In the Veda, his name was Kapila. This wheel represented the magne magnetosphere of the earth and is sectioned with different complex fields, something called the magnetophores, the geomagnetic equator with the shock wave layer, a trap radiation region, a neutral layer, zone of auroras, and magnetic lines of fields, or magnetic field lines. This you can find in the geomagnetic field of life by A.B. Dubrov. The same resonance the Earth has is the same resonance that your cells give off. But around the Earth is a field, a circle, as there is around the Sun, of negative and positive magnetic elements. In Kemetic history, the Neter or Ser, when he takes command of Chem, after the Great Flood, or what he called the Great Nuclear Flood, is given control of the wheel. And his body is shown as a circle with his feet touching his mouth. In Kemetic history, Plutarch, of this Kemetic history, Plutarch, and we all know who Plutarch was, he was studying Chem, wrote that by Anubis, the one you call Enpu, they understand the horizontal circle which divides the invisible world from that which is called Nefret to the visible world which they call Isis or Ast. And as this circle equally touches upon the confines of both light and darkness, it may be locked upon or looked upon as common to them both. And from the circumstance arose that semblance or that resemblance which they imagined between Anubis the dog, which is Cirrus, it being observed of this animal that he is equally watchful as well by day and by night. They're talking about the Cirrus star system. Green skin may seem crazy, but it clarifies many oddities about our present biochemistry. The Neteru must have had an excellent balance of zinc, copper, magnesium, and iron in their bloodstream. To have green skin, copper would have to have been in abundance in the blood. In other words, their blood would have had to have been more like chlorophyll, maybe even a gold color, and they would have not had been able to take a heavy CO2 atmosphere. Copper is an excellent oxidation reduction element as it synthesizes enzymes towards that end. We know chlorophyll and human blood are nearly identical, but only one major factor keeps us from having efficient oxygen transference as the plant, and that is the loss of iron. I hate doing this. This is just jumping back and forth to give you certain pieces of information. Fragmented, it doesn't seem to connect too good. But this color that we have, this brown color that we have, only came after the fall the fall that you speak about. And if you look at the fall that you talk about in your seasons, what color do the trees turn to? Someone else? Yeah. I can see a bunch of yellow, gold, and brown people in here now. They're rushing me off the stage, and I know what we're going to talk about. They say, well, Reverend Valentine's crazy again. He's talking about us folks were green at one time. You thought I was crazy when I said AIDS didn't exist in 1985. Lost a lot of friends with that. Lost a lot of friends when I said that fibroid tumors and certain cystitic conditions in women are actually caused by too much testosterone in their bloodstream. Lost friends with that too. But watch, that information will come out. And until you start getting into the information about your color, the true secrets of color, you'll understand that your ancestors, the true ancestors in the gods, had a green hue, olive, malachite, and that your skin did process sunlight the way it was supposed to, like the plant. You were called at one time Satsapana, the man plant. And that's because you did emulate those things that had to do with color, the better synthesis of energy and oxygen and iron and all the rest of those elements comes via the color green. That's why the plant is so prolific in sunlight and why we are not. As far as exercise is concerned, very quickly, you are killing yourselves with aerobics. <laughs> and I say 
say this quite seriously for those of you who feel that you've got to go out and lose weight based upon you exhausting yourself. Sweating to our ancestors and those gods was something that you never did. Bleeding was also very embarrassing to the ancestral gods. Sweating, you lose all types of nutrition. Anytime you accelerate the life force within your body, you accelerate death, especially since you're breathing in the amount of oxygen. And, and I see this happening with our brothers and sisters, running in these streets of New York, inhaling this car smoke, and expecting to tell me that they're healthy. Great ancestors never did any kind of this mad aerobics when they were dealing with their health. They did Tai Chi. They did certain types of healing that came from breath. From breathing alone, you can lose weight. But you're not being told that because aerobics is an industry. Aerobics to the sisters is deadly because just the fact that they have these delicate eggs jumping up and down and bouncing all around, you wouldn't do that with the eggs you shop at at the supermarket, but you're doing it to yourself. Aerobics are destroying you because you don't understand why aerobics were invented. Aerobics were for the white man, the pale man, because he has a problem processing ferrous iron, heme iron into ferrous iron. In other words, the way his iron content is in his system, he can't transport oxygen properly. The way he transports oxygen is by hyperventilating himself. So what does he do? He has to constantly be on the move. He has to constantly have a drink in his hand. He has to constantly be doing pathological things to keep up with his health. He can't process oxygen properly. So he invents certain sports in order to hyperactivate himself to survive. And what do you do? You follow him. I know from being a West Indian and living in the West Indies, those people that were living to 80 and 100 weren't jogging 10 miles a day. If you could get them to barely walk fast enough to catch up with you, to have kept up with you, you were good. Those are the people that live long. But this constant inhaling and processing of toxic oxygen, especially with CO2 in the air as it is, you are killing yourself. And just like any light bulb, if you have a light bulb that's 40, a 40 uh, watt light bulb, if you pump 220 watts through it, what happens? It burns real bright for a minute and then what? Boom! Well that's what you're doing to yourself, beloved brothers and sisters. You're accelerating your life force and you're burning bright looking healthy, but you're aging more quickly. We don't have enough zinc in our systems and this is why our sisters labor so much in childbirth. Because of the lack of zinc. Don't believe that your dark brown color is all as it cracks up to be. It's a beautiful color. It is more superior to the pale man, but it still lacks something. And that lack is the color green, that chromatophore, that green, that magnesium that gives you the chlorophyll base. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to let you know that this Friday, if you want to pick up on this information, I'm going to be at the when worlds collide at 7 o'clock. And I'll discuss that along with those who wish to find out what they're getting ready to do with us through the vaccine program. And how the vaccine programs have now been sanctioned and that how they are going to use certain paramilitary people like, um, what do you call these people that they can call from the job and do these things with them? Um, no, reserves, come on with it. That the reserves are going to be used in order to go with the social workers to make sure that your children in their home are vaccinated. They're going to come door to door to you now in the, in the, in the Clinton plan. So if you want to find out more about how you can prevent having to get these vaccinations, and more about let's how we can deal with melanin based upon the melanin that is just in the middle of perfect and just left of toxic. And how your melanin has to be enhanced by proper nutrition and not just because you're in the sunlight. Because the sun is going to do just as much damage to you all now as it's been doing to the Europeans. Mark my words because of the atmospheric change and the geomagnetic flux.
But if you don't better go out with your hats at the beach, you're going to get the same sunburn Europeans going to be getting. Trust me. With that, I'd like to thank that chef Sook for the moment I have, and you can call me at numbers 718-756-1122, 756-1122, and if you want to keep up with this conversation, uh, meet me down the way at When Worlds Collide, Friday at 7 p.m. It's on Flatbush Avenue, right at the corner of Livingston Street. Right down the block. Trains, oh, I like this. <laughs> the trains are the number two, three, four, or five to Nevin. And just walk south. Once again, I'm on, uh, I'm in gear four, and I'm whizzing past you all. So much to do, so little time. I thank you. Let's do it again for Megan Trevor, Megan Trevor.